Good day everyone. I'm Mom Apasible, your ICT teacher. I hope everyone is safe and doing well. So, in our past lessons, we discussed about the classification and identification of tools and the do's and don'ts of using it. Now, in our week 3, I will discuss about the proper use of tools in computer systems servicing. Using tools properly helps to prevent accident and damage to the equipment and people. Using the right tool for a specific task save your time and effort in accomplishing it. Kaya nga pinag-aralan natin, di ba, kung ano yung, yung, um, yung mga tools, kung paano sila gamitin, kung saan sila dapat gamitin. So ngayon, paano nga ba sila gamitin? sa halimbawa pag-assemble or disassemble ng computer. So number one is we have the proper use of ESD tools. Now, when we say ESD, it means electrostatic discharge. So, ito yung mga tools that are used to prevent electrostatic discharge that may damage the components. So, sabi ko nga sa inyo, dati, di ba, in our past lesson, tayong tao ay meron tayong tinataglay na static electricity that can damage the computer component. Now, di ba, meron tayong dalawang tools na diniscuss last time. I mean, meron tayong dalawang ESD tools na diniscuss. Ano ba yung dalawa na yun? So, number one is we have this. Ano bang tawag dyan? Um, This is the anti-static mod. It is placed hardware on to prevent static electricity from building up. So, that is the use of the anti-static mat. So, paano siya gamitin? Number one, lay the mat under the computer case. So, ito yung computer case. Nakalagay siya dito sa anti-static mat. Number two, Clip the mat to the case to provide a grounded surface in which you can place parts as you remove them from the system you need. So, ito yung parang pinaka clip niya. Always remember yan before assembling and disassembling your computer, you need to put an anti-static mat. So, this is where you put your uh, system unit and the hardware parts of the computer. Next is, what do you call this one? This is called the anti-static wrist trap. So, it is used to equalize the electrical charge between you and the equipment. Your body has a static electricity that might damage the components of the system you need. Anti-static wrist trap is a conductor that connects your body to the equipment that you are working on. So, isa rin to sa kailangan mo pag mag-assemble ka or disassemble ka ng system you need. So, ngayon, paano siya isuot? Uh, ito yung parts niya. Kung mapapansin nyo, meron siyang clip. And then, ito yung parang pinaka ano niya, wrist strap. Ayan. Tapos, kung mapapansin nyo, meron siyang metal dito. Ito. So, paano siya gamitin? Number one, wrap the strap around your wrist. So, ayan, nakarap na siya, di ba? And secure it using the snap or velcro. So, ito yun. Ayan. Always remember that the metal on the back of the wrist strap should remain in contact with your skin. Yun. And then, number two, Snap the connector at the end of the wire to the wrist strap and connect the other end either to the equipment or to the same grounding point that the anti-static mat is connected to. So, pwedeng dalawa. Pwede mo siyang i-connect, like dito sa second picture ko, yung uh, anti-static wrist strap, kinanak mo siya sa nandito sa anti-static mat, sa grounding point ng anti-static mat. Or, di kaya naman, Pwede mo siyang i-connect. The metal case of the system unit is a good place to connect the wire. Pwede mo siyang i-connect sa, sa case ng system unit. Katulad nung ginawa dito sa picture. Clinip siya dito. Yan. Okay. Next tayo. Number two. 
proper use of hand tools. So, ano na ba yung mga hand tools na pinag-aralan natin? So, the repairman or technician should know the appropriate use of each tool in the toolkit. Hindi ka lang basta-basta pwede gumamit ng, ng hand tools pag magkukumpuni ka or gagawa ka ng computer. Meron silang um, right tool and a specific job. Letter A, screws. Pag sinabi natin screws sa Tagalog, ito ay tornillo. So, ayan, uh, based dito sa picture ko, meron kayong makikitang different types of screws. At sa different types of screws na yan, meron tayong specific type ng screwdriver para sa kanila. So, ibig sabihin, kung hindi fit sa'yo or kung hindi fit yung, uh, yung isang screwdriver dun sa isang screws, ibig sabihin, merong right screwdriver for it. Okay? Um, ayan, diba? Meron kayong slot head screw, Phillips head, diba? Ayan yung mga pinag-aralan natin na example, yung Torx head, diba? Yung hex head screw. So, match each screw with the proper screwdriver. Place the tip of the screwdriver on the head of the screw. So, ngayon, paano ba sikipan or itayat yung screw natin? Siyempre, you should turn the screwdriver clockwise to tighten the screw. And to loosen naman, turn it counterclockwise. I-avoid lang natin yung over-tightening ng screws kasi... Malulos thread yung screw natin. Okay? So, next natin, letter B, is the flat screwdriver. So, ito, yung i-discuss naman natin is yung mga commonly used dun sa uh, computer system servicing subject natin. Or sa pag uh, gawa, pag -re repair pag disassemble, or assemble ng computer. So, use a flat screwdriver when you are working with a slotted screw. Slotted screw, ganyan ang itsura ng slotted screw, yung parang pa-minus sign. Okay, at then yung tip naman ni flat screwdriver is ganito, naka-straight lang siya. Do not use a flat screwdriver to remove a crosshead screw. Parang ano lang yan eh. Huwag mong ipilit yung isang bagay kung hindi siya para sa'yo kasi... Uh, masasaktan ka lang. Or kung para dito sa screws natin, masisira lang yung screw natin. Kung flathead screw naman siya, tapos gagamitan mo siya ng Phillips screwdriver, pwede siyang masira. Never use a screwdriver as a pry bar. If you cannot remove a component, check to see if there is a clip or latch that is securing the component in place. So, next natin. Phillips screwdriver. Ano naman yung is itsura ni Phillips screwdriver? So, ganito. Cross head screw. And then, ganito si Phillips screwdriver. Pa-cross naman siya. Use a Phillips screwdriver with cross head screws. Do not use this type of screwdriver to puncture anything. This will damage the head of the screwdriver. Si Philips screwdriver ay para lamang kay crosshead screws. Okay? Next. Letter D. Hex driver. Ano nga bang itsura niya? Bakit hex? So, use a hex driver to loosen and tighten bolts that have a hexagonal head. So, para lang siya dun sa mga screws na hexagonal or six-sided head yung itsura. Hex bolts should not be over-tightened as the threads of the bolts can be stripped. Do not use a hex driver that is too large for the bolt that you are using. Siyempre, uh, kung ano yung size ng screws natin, dapat ibabagay natin siya dun sa hex driver na gagamitin natin. Uh, parang, ano naman, di ba, masisira siya kapag Ang laki ng hex driver na gamit mo, tapos yung, yung, yung screw mo ay maliit lang. Siyempre, di ba, ibibase din natin dun sa kung anong size. 
ng screws natin, yung gagamitin nating hex driver. Okay? Next, letter E, port retriever, needle row, nose pliers, or tweezers. So, ano ba itura nila? So, again, this is the part retriever, this is the nose plier, and this is the tweezers. So, correct ko lang kayo ha. Itong tweezers na to, hindi siya ginagamit pang pluck or pang tanggal ng, ng hair sa eyebrow natin. So, ito, ginagamit siya, iba yun. And then, iba naman tong tweezers na to sa ginagamit natin in... Um, fixing or repairing your computer. So, the part retriever, needle nose pliers, and tweezers are used to place and retrieve screws that may be hard to reach with your fingers. Do not scratch or heat any components when using these tools. So, ito yung mga ginagamit natin dun sa part na hindi natin kaya, kaya i-reach ng mga hands nyo. Yung mahirap ilagay. Pwede natin silang gamitin. Di ba, na, nakikita nyo naman pag, ano, halimbawa na lang, kahit nga sa cellphone, di ba, yung mga repairman natin, or yung mga technician, di ba, sobrang liliit ng mga screws nun. So, gumagamit sila na maaaring yung tweezers para malagay lang yung screw dun sa circuit board. Ayan. Pero, syempre, sabi dyan, be careful in um, putting the screws using these tools. Kasi, you might uh, damage the component. So, caution. Da dapat tandaan. Pencils should not be used inside the computer because pencils lead can act as a conductor that may damage the computer components. So, wag na wag kayong gagamit ng pencil. Uh, halimbawa, meron kang gusto sigurong tanggalin na ano, na na screws dun sa sa system unit or dun sa computer tapos gagamit ka ng, ng pencil hindi dapat yon kasi nga ba meron tayong screwdrivers na dapat gamitin para dun and then caution if excessive force is needed to remove or add a component something may be wrong so kung sobra sobra na yung, yung force ha, na, na na binibigay mo para lang matanggal or ma-add yung isang component malalaman niyo to kapag mag-aassemble na kayo tsaka magdi-disassemble ibig sabihin merong mali dun sa paglalagay mo it's either baligtad or um hindi siya suited para doon okay number three, proper use of cleaning materials Dirt and dust can cause problems with the physical operation of fans, buttons, and other mechanical components. On electrical components, an excessive buildup of dust will act like an insulator and trap the heat. This insulation will weaken the ability of heat sinks and cooling fans to keep components cool, causing chips and circuits to overheat and fail. Parang ano lang siya eh. Example, Yung electric fan nyo dun sa bahay. ba? Hindi nyo siya nililine. Sobrang dami nyo ng alikabok. ba? Ang resulta nun, yung fan nyo, hindi siya bumubuga ng hangin ng maayos. So, ganun din sa computer. Yung, ano, yung mga dirt, yung mga dust, nagkakos sila ng, ano, ng, parang winiwikan nila yung ability ng heat sinks and cooling fans to keep components cool. Ayan yung ano yung yung para hindi uminit yung yung parts ng mga computer natin kasi 'di ba, machine yung mga yan eh. So, binubuo rin niya ng mga chips and circuits, especially yung nandun sa system unit natin. Kaya nga tayo merong heat sinks and cooling fans din. So, sila yung uh nagki-keep dun sa part na yon na na maging cool lang sila at hindi sila ma-overheat. Tsaka isa pa, uh, mostly, diba dun sa mga computer shop natin, kung mapapansin nyo, ano, uh, dapat naka-aircon, or dun na lang sa comlab, diba naka-aircon tayo dun. So, tumutulong kasi yun para hindi mag-overheat yung mga circuit dun sa computer. Or else, kung wala namang aircon dun sa computer shop, ba mapapansin nyo na tinatanggal nila yung cover ng system unit. Yun. 
Next, uh, caution. Before cleaning your computer, make sure to turn it off and then unplug the device from the power source to avoid electrocution. So, syempre, lagi nating tatandaan kung uh, lilinisin natin yung computer natin, kung tatanggalin natin yung alikabok, syempre, i-make sure muna na na nakatanggal or naka-unplug sa power source yung computer natin. Okay? Para hindi kayo makuryente. So, computer cases. Clean computer cases and the outside of monitors with a mild cleaning solution on a damp, lint-free cloth. Mix one drop of dishwashing liquid with four ounces of water to create a cleaning solution. If any water drips inside the case, allow enough time for the liquid to dry before empowering on the computer system. On the computer. So, dito, ah, hindi sinasabi na ito na nababasain mo yung system unit mo, ha? That's very wrong kasi masisira yung computer pag binasa mo yon, lalo na kapag sinaksak mo na lang ng basa, di ba? So, um... We're talking about the computer cases. Yung pinaka-case lang tayo dito. Yung pinaka-housing lang. Okay? So, syempre, ano, malalaman nyo yan kung paano tanggalin kapag nag-assemble and disassemble na tayo ng computer. Letter B. LCD screens. Do not use ammoniated glass cleaners or any other solution on an LCD screen. The cleaner should be specifically designed for the purpose. Harsh chemicals will damage the coating on the screen. There is no glass protecting the screen, so be gentle when cleaning them and do not press firmly on the screen. So, when cleaning your computer monitor or your laptop, you should not, you should not use any uh, other solution. Okay? So, ang um, pinaka-best na pang-tanggal ng dust or ng dirt ng ng screens natin ay yung, ano, isa siya sa cleaning tools natin. Okay, the cleaning tool na Clean Free Cloth. Diba? It is used to clean different computer components without scratching or leaving debris. So, yun ang pinaka-perfect na gamitin natin pag Nililinis natin or tinatanggalan ng dirt and dust yung monitors and yung screens natin. Next, letter C, your keyboard. Clean a desktop keyboard with compressed air to remove the debris between the keys. Make sure that the straw is attached to control the airflow. So, pag nag-clean daw tayo ng keyboard natin, kung meron kayong compressed air, pwede yan yung gamitin nyo pang linis. Or kung wala, yung iba, gumagamit lang sila ng paintbrush, yung, yung maliit lang para malinis yung, yung gilid-gilid ng keyboard natin. Ganon. Okay. Tapos, additional info lang. Yung iba naman, pag sa mga laptops, ha, para, um, ma-minimize yung dirt ng keyboard, bumibili sila ng pinaka-cover para dun sa keyboard. Yun. Next, letter D, mouse. Use a lint prick cloth to clean the top and the bottom part of the mouse. Yan. Kailangan pa nasan din natin yung mouse natin, computer mouse natin. Nang lint prick cloth. Next letter E, component contacts. So, ano ba tong mga component contacts na to ng computer natin? So, clean the motherboard using compressed air to remove the dirt and dust particles. And use a soft bristle brush if necessary. So, ayan. Um, pwede rin daw natin linisan yung motherboard natin using the compressed air. O di kaya naman... You may also clean component contacts like rum with isopropyl alcohol and lean free swabs or cloth to clean. Make sure that the contacts do not collect any lint from the cloth or cotton swab. So, pwede natin uh, linisin yung motherboard natin and yung rum natin using the isopropyl alcohol. And then, syempre pupunasan natin siya ng lint free cloth. 
Okay. So, ito lang yung pwede nating gamitin alcohol. Hindi kayo pwede gumamit ng iba like ethyl alcohol. Hindi pwede yun. Ang pwede lang um, na ginagamit natin pang linis ng computer components natin ay C isopropyl alcohol. So, now that you understand the proper use of PSD tools, proper use of hand tools, and proper use of cleaning materials, you also need to know about the PPE or what is the purpose of PPE or yung tinatawag natin na personal protective equipment. So, whenever you perform a task in the workshop, you must use personal protective equipment that is appropriate for the task and which conforms to your local safety regulations and policies. So, itong PPE na to, ginagamit ito for your own safety. And, syempre, gagamitin natin siya based dun sa activities na gagawin nyo. Okay? Um, example nyan is meron, merong eye protector, merong respirator, ear protector, Safety gloves, hard helmet, visibility jacket, safety boot, and ID card. So, ginagamit ito for your own safety. Next naman is, syempre, ito yung hindi mawawala. Pag gumagawa kayo ng, ng activity or ng performance task sa workshop. So, the safety procedure, number one. Whenever you perform a task in the workshop, you should use and wear personal protective equipment which is appropriate for the task. Tulad ng sinabi ko kanina dun sa di ba? Next, do not use flammable cleaners or water on electrical equipment. Follow all cautions, warnings, and instructions marked on the equipment. And then use properly grounded power outlet. Ito lang naman ay yung mga simple safety procedure na kailangan yung tandaan at kailangan yung gawin for your own safety. At syempre, um, if ever man, or always naman na may instruction si teacher before kayo gumawa ng certain task, right? Ayun. Kung ano yung sabihin ni teacher na instruction, kung paano siya gawin, you should follow it. Okay, that's all for today. So, this is the end of our week 3 lesson. I hope you understand it. And, kung hindi man naintindihan, pwede naman siyang i-play ulit. Okay? Thank you!